Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and Apple just wrapped up their scary fast Apple event for this October and they announced some new products. I thought we'd go over everything announced, the things we thought they'd announced that they didn't announce. And this was probably the shortest Apple event in recent memory at about 35 minutes or so. One thing we did notice right at the beginning though, is Apple labeled the event differently depending on where you live or where you watched it. If you were watching it on apple.com or maybe YouTube, it was called scary fast in the USA. However, if you were on the Apple TV app and within the TV app, if you're playing it, it actually said scarily fast. So something a little bit different. However, apparently some people outside the U S that's what the event was called anyway. Now, Apple started off the event with new chipsets. They announced the new M3 chips that we all expected. So basically they announced an M3, an M3 pro and an M3 max. It's on the three nanometer architecture. They're more efficient and they had a big focus on GPU performance. So on the GPU, it has dynamic caching, mesh shading and ray tracing all built in. It also still has those dual ProRes video encoders and AV one encoders, which should help with watching YouTube and more. So that's something that they actually updated. They brought out that new chipset and explained a lot of things about it in detail. Now we'll cover that a little bit later as far as the overall performance, but in general, Apple says the M3 is 15% faster than the M2 or 30% faster than the M1 in general, but the performance is a bit difficult to show. Now Apple did announce some new MacBooks and iMac, but let's first go over the iMac. As far as the iMac goes, well, they've updated it with the M3 processor. Mostly the colors are exactly the same as we had before. So we have blue, green, pink, silver, yellow, orange, and purple. And if we go to order it, it says available on 11, seven. And you'll see here, if we scroll down, it starts at $1,299 and goes up to $2,699. The base model has an eight core CPU and an eight core GPU with 256 gigs of storage and eight gigabytes of Ram. If you want to fully spec it out, you can go to the website here, spec it out with 24 gigs of Ram, two terabytes of storage. And then depending on the options you pick for the magic mouse or magic trackpad, it can bring it up higher, but it goes up to $2,699 in the USA. So that's the big update there. As far as the iMac goes, all of the same design, just the upgraded processor, no change in displays or anything else. So that is a little disappointing, but I'm assuming that most people probably just buy it in the base configuration or close to it and use it as a family computer. And it's fine for that. You don't necessarily need anything else. So you can order it right now and you can start it picking it up on 11 seven in your local Apple store, or they'll ship it to you depending on the configuration altogether. Now, Apple did update the 14 inch and 16 inch MacBook pros as we expected. There's an all new space black color I'll show you in a moment. And one thing that they added is a new fingerprint resistant coating. So unlike the midnight MacBook air that gets fingerprints all over it in a single day, just from picking it up, they apparently have a coating on this to help against that. So we'll have to see if that holds up, but it should look closer to the watch band that I'm wearing. That's titanium, but it's actually got a space black look to it. And we should have something that looks a little more matte finish. But again, I'll show you that in just a moment. As far as the overall design and weight and everything, it's basically the same, the same dimensions, same ports, same thickness and everything else. Everything seems to be very similar when it comes to that. However, the processors are where it's actually changed quite a bit. So if we go back on the iPad here and then we go into Safari and then we go over to the MacBooks, you'll see that we have a 14 inch and 16 inch option. And the base version starts with an M3 at $1,599. They did not update the 13 inch MacBook, and maybe they'll get rid of it as maybe this could be a replacement or they'll just continue to discount the other one. But it starts with an eight core CPU, 10 core GPU, eight gigs of RAM and 512 gigabytes of storage. If you want to switch over to the M3 Pro, that actually starts at $1,999 and has an 11 core CPU, 14 core GPU, 18 gigabytes of RAM and 512 gigs of storage. I really would have liked to see them bump that up to a base of one terabyte. I think for the pro that makes sense. Unfortunately, they didn't do that. The M3 max, if you're going to order that again, that starts at 3199 and has a 14 core CPU, 30 core GPU, 36 gigs of Ram and a one terabyte storage option. 
For the very top of the line, if you go in and select this, you can spec this up to a 16 core CPU, 40 core GPU, and 16 core neural engine. You can give it up to 128 gigabytes of RAM now, and also eight terabytes of storage, bringing it to a total of $6,899, depending on where you live. So pretty expensive. The 16 inch model is basically the exact same specs, but more expensive. So if we go back, switch over to the 16 inch, the 16 inch does not have the base M3 available, but it has the M3 pro with the base starting at 2499 and fully specced out at $7,199. So if you want to fully spec out a 16 inch MacBook pro 7199 plus tax in the United States. So pretty expensive this time around. Again, we have that new space black color. So that's what it looks like. Some of the early leaks got this right and it looks like a darker space gray. So once I get my hands on it, of course, we'll take a look, see how it holds up to fingerprints and more, but it's different than space gray and space gray is no longer an option. You just have silver, and space black. A couple other things worth noting with this new MacBook Pro is it has the same display, but the non HDR content is now up to 600 nits. So SDR can go up to 600 nits to match that of the studio display as according to what Apple says. Also on the 14 inch MacBook Pro, we have up to 18 hours of battery life. If you're just watching video and on the 16 inch up to 22 hours of battery life. Both of them are available to pre-order now and should be available starting Tuesday, November 7th, but the M3 Max chipsets will be a little bit later than that. So you'll see here, November 20th to the 28th at the time of actually configuring this. So a couple weeks after that. Now, if you're wondering how fast these chipsets are, well, that's a little bit hard to show. Of course, we don't have one in hand to try out, but if we go to learn more, Apple will give us some more information about this. And it's a little bit hard to understand like it normally is with odd graphs and more. So you can see the different configurations here, and I'll link this website in the description. If you're not on apple.com, you can just go directly to it that way. And you'll see things such as 80% faster CPU, multi-thread performance than 16 inch MacBook Pro with M1 Max. Now, Honestly, I never upgraded from the M1. I have an M1 Ultra, I have an M1 Max in this MacBook, so I'm looking forward to upgrading because it'll be a bump up from the M1, but I didn't think the M2 was a big enough bump. If we go deeper on the M3 chips here, we've got a little website that they've made that shows sort of graphs comparing everything. They've basically given us the best case scenario here. So image upscaling in applications such as Photomator up to 17.7 times faster than an M1 MacBook Pro or M1. So you'll see that here. And then if we go to things like video editing, it says Final Cut Pro 7.4 times faster with the M3 than the M1. So this is just the M3. If we scroll down further, you'll see the M3 Pro and you can see this here. And one thing I thought was a little different is if you'll see the 14 inch model here where 3D rendering is up to 24.7 times faster than an M1 with an M3 Pro. So M3 Pro versus M1 Pro. If we go to the 16 inch model, it's only 2.8 times faster. Go back to the 14 inch you'll see that it's 24.7 times faster. The same is true when we go to the M3 Max. So if we scroll down, you'll see here M3 Max compared to previous MacBook Pro models, 49.1 times faster in render performance in Redshift. If we go to the 16 inch model, it's only 5.3 times faster. So there's definitely some changes there, some differences, but you can go into different things and see video editing four times faster with text-based editing in Premiere Pro and things like that. But I wish they'd just give side-by-side -side in different, different tasks, such as exporting Final Cut Pro video, exporting Premiere, exporting DaVinci Resolve, and things like that. So they haven't gotten into a lot of different results as far as that goes, but it should be plenty fast, and I'll be testing it out, of course, video editing and more. And when I do, let me know what tests you'd like to see, so I'll get those ready to run once I get my hands on one. Now, as far as things they didn't show at this event, well, that was a bit disappointing. One of the things we didn't get was updated accessories with USB-C. So none of those are available. In fact, when you order the new iMac, you still get a lightning to USB-C cable. So that proves that right there with the keyboard, mouse, and trackpad. So we don't have that. We also did not get any other USB-C accessories, anything else, and we didn't get any iPads either, such as the iPad mini. So many people were hoping for maybe a surprise with an iPad mini with an updated processor. It seems like this is coming next year. We also did not get any display updates. That's one thing I was hoping for. The Pro Display XDR has been around a long time. We didn't get a larger iMac or anything else. So that's a little bit disappointing this time around.
There was really nothing else. And I think most of this event could have just been sent out in a press release. I don't know that Apple necessarily needed to do a whole event for a 14 inch, 16 inch MacBook pro with an M3 and then an iMac. So it's one of the oddest events I think in the recent history, but maybe they just wanted to do something extra for the end of the year. And maybe that was the meaning of scary fast. Not only are the processors, but also the event was scary fast. Let me know what you think of the event or what you'd like to see once we get our hands on the 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pros. And if there's anything else you'd like to know about the iMac or anything else, let me know in the comments below. If you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, I'll link it in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.